I'm next uh, for media watch on the program, and we can say hello to James uh, Creedon. Good evening, Hi, James. Fourth of July, lots of commentary coming out to yes. Donald Trump's decision to hold a military c- parade, and he's calling it, it's going to be the biggest celebration in the history of the United States. Superlatives. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Who'd have thunk? Anyway, a um, lot of cynicism about this uh, in the media. I'll, I'll, oh. I'll, I'll do a condensed version because we could go on all night. Having failed to make Veterans Day all about him, the president now settles for Independence Day. That seems to be the kind of liberal, more left-wing uh, perspective on this uh, in a nutshell. Uh, you've got author Stephen King, Trump's big military parade. This is what dictators do. Of course, many will then point out that uh, France is not a dictatorship. And, India uh, as well. India, India has military right. parades so, of democracy. You know, it is slightly unfair to say that because there are plenty of, of democracies who do this. Bette Midler um, getting uh, in on the chat. An unheard of 115 degrees in France. This is uh, mm. a few days ago uh, during the heat wave. One of our allies and Mr Trump is only interested in putting t- uh, uh, tanks on the mall for his salute to himself on the 4th of July. I'm so ashamed. In other words, with global warming and whatnot, all of this tankery and military stuff is, uh, you know, not helping matters. That got a response from Pierce Morgan, who's a bit of a fan of Donald Trump, saying, God, you're so right, Bet. President Trump should send his tanks to France immediately and fight the sun. He is friends with Donald Trump, to be <laughs> fair. No wonder he's going to rush his But poor, poor Bet. I, I, think it, I think it was a bit harsh. Or perhaps President Macron could deploy all, his, deploy all his own tanks that were paraded last Bastille Day to zero outrage from insane liberal celebrities. So that's the point of view, I guess, of Trump uh, supporters, uh, that Macron doesn't get this kind of grief. This is in the New York Times, in the land of the free people. People live in mortal fear of the moral faux pas. My column in the New York Times, this is Brett Stevens. Basically, he takes, uh, he juxtaposes 1776 uh, in, in, in independence in the US and 1789, the French Revolution. And he says, armed with the truth, Jacobins here in France could brand any individuals who dared to disagree with them traitors or fanatics. Um, that's uh, historian Susan Dunn wrote that of the French Revolution. Any distinction between their own political adversaries and the people's enemies was obliterated. And what he's saying is that kind the spirit of uh, the French Revolution, Robespierre and all of that, is somewhat present in the US today. So he's lamenting uh, the current state of uh, politics and society in the US. I'll finish with a couple of cartoons. Tanks and soldiers and missiles and trucks and guns and lots of ice cream. So he's being depicted as juvenile and uh, somewhat childish uh, in his desire for having this military parade by those who don't agree with it. There you go. It's even been given a sort of uh, slightly... Uh, it's all know. about Trump, to be yeah. to be fair. I mean... But, but it's, it's his idea. Indeed, his brainchild. Uh, Moving on next to reactions over in India where uh, high-profile resignation from the Congress party, Rahul Gandhi saying he's stepping down. Right. So a quick look at some of the reactions in the press. This is in uh, neighbouring Pakistan's The Express Tribune. The fall of a dynasty, because of course uh, there were many members of the family who were prime ministers. Uh, Does Congress still have a future in Indian politics? And what uh, Ayush Khanna says in this piece is, suggestions are coming from all quarters. The Congress party must die for a credible opposition to emerge. emerge. Others saying the Congress needs to dump the dynasties. Others again saying Rahul Gandhi uh, off, his offer to, re- to resign is suicidal for the party. So there's a lot of different kind of theories about this. Uh, the party of opposition, of course, did very poorly in the recent general election. And we're seeing uh, with uh, Narendra Modi a uh, much more nationalist form of brand of politics emerging that a lot of people are uncomfortable with. Mm. Same story in many other countries, I guess. Uh, so that's one piece there saying that the, fall of the does Congress still have a future in Indian politics? And uh, the dynasty problem is what they're identifying in this uh, particular article as it's bad for optics when you have, uh, you know, sort of um, what they point out here is a political prince treating the mandate of the people as his birthright. In other words, time to move on from that. Uh, Dealing with the old guard, what Raul Gandhi could not learn from Narendra Modi. This is in uh, India today. What they're saying here is is Narendra Modi is fundamentally, ruthlessly pragmatic and uh, it's a a guiding principle of his uh, BJP party. Raul Gandhi simply failed to show courage to sack the old guard. This is a frequent criticism of the Congress party that has got this kind of um, old guard that was, they need to during the election he was taking advice from the previous prime minister where, who was accused of inertia you know right. over the past five years so it's right. not the wisest move one right. could argue so Modi pragmatic got rid of the old guard in his party Gandhi perhaps should have done the same lots more to say on that but perhaps uh, not enough time uh, uh, moving on uh, to here in France yes. there's a cover on Paris Match uh, that's uh, making 
that's caused quite a stir featuring the former president. Nicolas Sarkozy and he is uh, he, he his wife uh, Carla Bruni is famously a former supermodel a very tall uh, lady and taller than uh, Nicolas Sarkozy <laughs> but that didn't come across in this particular uh, cover of Paris Match. Now uh, Paris Match were kind of interrogated about it. They did explain that it wasn't that they photoshopped it it's simply that the photo shoot took place in their home and he was happened to be standing on a step at this particular moment. So uh, it did lead to a lot of people saying oh there must be lots of steps in the <laughs> Sarkozy Bruni household. Others, uh, such as Guillaume Tessé, a Twitter star here in France, helpfully uh, correcting uh, the optics, if you like. Uh, others being just <laughs> downright, uh, downright cruel, I think it's fair oh. to say. Um, this is an a, a Italian uh, filmmaker based here in Paris saying that she has never seen a movie poster, print, ad or any kind of promotional visual where a woman is taller than a man when standing side by side. So such a visual must scare the patriarchy. Uh, in other words, uh, it's, it's not just Nicolas Sarkozy. And if you'll remember, last year there was a controversy about uh, a 37, 38 year old stamp uh, that came out at the time of that royal wedding. Mm. Uh, in fact, uh, Charles was only a fraction taller uh, than Diana and that caused a bit of a stir at the time uh, because that stamp, which, we, which was uh, emerged at the time to commemorate the royal wedding, did the same sort of thing. It kind of uh, it gave this optics uh, that, the man is taller. that the man is taller, even when he wasn't. James, thank you very much for that. James Creedon there with uh, Media Watch.